Hey you guys, it's Victoria, and I'm so excited to do this video because it's the start of a new possible series called Questions from a Carnivore. And I got this idea from a good friend of mine, and you know who you are. <laughs> so thank you for your wonderful idea. He thought it'd be a good idea for people like him who eat meat right now to ask me questions that the general population might not know the answer to and that I can answer. So I thought that's a really good idea. Plus, questions from a carnivore has a good ring to it, right? <laughs> so let's start out with the question. Okay, so he said, I have heard that vegans and vegetarians don't necessarily live longer than meat eaters do. I didn't do a ton of research on the subject, but I did find a few articles that claim it. They contend that vegans and vegetarians don't get enough carnosine which is critical to prevent glycation. So my question is in multiple parts. Do vegans live longer lives? And is there some credible study to show this? Is carnosine a myth made up by meat eaters? Or is it truly important? If it is truly important, should vegans take some kind of supplement? So that's the question. First of all, before I go into any of these questions, I want to start out by talking a little bit about meat. And granted, I do have an entire video out on this about why meat is bad for you. But just a forewarning, I recorded that when I was still recording on my phone and I, I had just started doing videos. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt that the quality is kind of bad and it's from a little bit of a while ago, but it still has really, really good content. So I will link that video below if you want an even more detail about why meat is bad for you. But I'm just going to give you a little summary of it because it's really important before I go into answering any questions about meat. First of all, when we think about it, what is meat? It's a dead animal, okay? So it's dead animal flesh, it's a carcass, and there's absolutely nothing in dead animal flesh nutritionally that you cannot get from plant food. We need to take the complicated monkey mind questions that arise and we need to get down to more simplicity, right? Because I am all about simplicity. It's really easy for the human mind to just take over and just get really scientific about everything and get really, really super complicated and just make life harder than it needs to be. Um, especially when you're talking about diet. It all really boils down to simplicity. If we're thinking in simple terms and common sense terms, in my opinion, there, you don't want to be eating dead, rotting, putrefying flesh. You don't want to put that into your living body um, because we're just not physiologically made for it, first of all. So why are we not physiologically made for it? Well, we have no animal instinct. We're not born with any type of animal instinct to hunt down and kill anything. We don't have claws. Like, let's say whenever I was three years old, or even when I was 13 or 23 like I am now, I have never had an instinct to go out into nature. Like, let's take a cow for example. There's no way I'm gonna go run into a field and bite a cow with my mouth and kill it and eat it with eat it raw with the blood and the veins and the GI tract and everything intact, you know? When we see roadkill on the road, what's our first instinct? Ew, that's disgusting, you know, get me away from that. Our instinct is not to go run and eat it and that it tastes good, you know? If we see a cherry tree or a blueberry bush on the side of the road, you know, it's most people's instinct to say, oh, that looks good, you know, I could eat that. But it's not that way with roadkill. So I'm just saying we have no animal instinct to hunt down and kill a dead animal with our bare hands and eat it raw. Unless we are living in caveman times where we really, really had to eat meat to live, you know? We do not live in a time right now where we need to eat meat at all. And we're talking about these diets like the paleo diet. It just really has me scratching my head because we obviously do not live in a time where we need to eat meat anymore, so why would we? And also, when we're talking about the paleo diet, that's a diet based on going back in time. It's about 
regression and and I am all about thinking about forward thinking you know what what's the future gonna hold you know could we have a vegan planet in the future I'm not gonna try to go back in the past and live in the past to decide what I'm eating now in 2014 it just doesn't make sense so many many years ago when we had to move into colder climates yes it, we did need to eat meat we still were not physiologically made up for it. You still got acidosis and the breakdown of the human body when you ate meat. People still got arthritis back then. We don't need to go back in time to figure out what we need to eat now. That's my point. Back to not having a human instinct to eat meat. We have no claws. We have no humongous canine teeth. Yes, we have canines, but have you ever tried to bite into an apple and not have canines? We need those. We have no jaws that move only up and down like real carnivores. Our jaws move side to side to break down the plant material. And also, and I think this is the most important one, is that our GI tract in the human body is really, really long. That's because it is made to break down fruit and plant foods. Now, if we were true carnivores, our GI tracts would be super short, like a lion or a wolf. Carnivores have super short GI tracts because when they eat that dead, rotting animal flesh, it's doing just that. It's, it's rotting, it's dead, it's putrefying, it's fermenting. So the body of a true carnivore is born to release that as soon as possible. So we don't have that. We have a really, really long GI tract. And so that's why when you eat meat, it can take almost up to a week to digest. I know people don't know that but it takes a really, really long time for meat to digest in the human body and it's a lot of work and it breaks down the body and it creates toxicity and acidity. So there's nothing healthy about eating meat and we're not physiologically made up for it. And also meat and dairy, you know, they ignite disease in the body over time. They do not promote health. There's nothing that can promote health about eating meat or dairy. And, and maybe hundreds of years ago before meat was filled with growth hormones, antibiotics, all kinds of things that the main population doesn't even know about or study. You know, I've heard of meat glue. They take this powdery meat glue and for into horrible scraps of meat and then it can conglom and come together and they sell it to you as a a big wonderful cut of meat although it's just loaded with chemicals i encourage you to if you think there's anything healthy about eating meat to just look up slaughterhouse videos you know cows are knee deep in their own fecal matter it's disgusting they're not happy cows you know there's no humane slaughter i just would much rather live a life where i didn't have to kill anything to survive because it's not necessary to kill anything to survive. I don't want that karma on me, you know what I mean? Meat and dairy is just extremely acidic and it causes toxicity that's unimaginable over time, you know? And what does toxicity and acidity cause? Cancer, diseases, you know, all kinds of things that run rampant in the body when you're not feeding it alkaline living foods. That's why it's so amazing whenever we take out the animal products out of someone's diet who is experiencing disease like symptoms and they go away, you know, they fade, they get better. And that's because when you take out animal products, you're finally allowing your body to start detoxifying. And, you know, the vegan diet and especially the raw vegan diet focusing and emphasizing on detoxification has healed so many people and it's not mainstream because a there's no money in it there's hardly any money in detoxifying with fruits and vegetables and herbs and b people get so defensive when you try to tell them that what they've been brainwashed their whole life is wrong you know people get really up in arms about it and so that's why the first time that you mention to anyone who's on the standard American diet or, or who knows nothing about health that you're vegan, they get real uh, nervous and they can almost get angry. And it's really sad, you know, because vegans are some of the most peaceful, happy people on the planet. And in my opinion, especially raw vegans, they're the most awake people on the planet. So there's no reason to get angry when you're talking about vegan diets, you know, because just trying to spread a message of peace and that we don't need to kill anything and slaughter anything to live. So I really just wanted to, to preface this question that I'm about to go into with that. So just really understand it. 
So in terms of the questions, do vegans or vegetarians live longer and is there a specific study to support that? Well, if I'm going to be super duper honest here, I think that in all honesty, vegans and especially vegetarians do not live that much longer than meat eaters. Why is that? Because you can still eat like crap and be a vegan or a vegetarian. You can stuff your face with bread all day long and then swig down a Pepsi and, and still call yourself a vegan, you know? I've heard of people trying to go vegan for ethical reasons and they're still eating McDonald's french fries because it's quote vegan. So no, if you are still living a life of debauchery, although you're not eating animal products, you still might not live longer than someone who is eating meat. And also, aside from the food trip, which I love to talk about, you know, in terms of long-term health, you can still live an, a very unhappy life with no spirituality, you can have a horrible relationship, you know, you might not get along with your husband or wife or your children or your family, you cannot get enough sleep to regenerate your body, you can be addicted to stimulants like caffeine, you can be stressed out like crazy, which is so rampant in this society. You know, stress alone can kill you. And you can do all those things and you can still be eating a vegan or a vegetarian diet. So if you're doing all of those things or even a couple of those things, you might not live long. You just really got to understand all spokes in the wheel of this. It's, it's just more than what you eat that is what's going to account for your life expectancy, in my opinion. Even if you eat a perfect, low-fat, raw vegan, living food diet, you can still not exercise and you can be very unhappy. You know, let's say you're living with a broken heart. You cannot live as long. And um, now that's just my opinion. And I'm sure some of you guys who are more science-minded might not understand that when I talk about spirituality or how a broken heart can kill you, but it's just my opinion, so take it with a grain of salt, but you have to admit that it does make sense a little bit, you know? So there's so many more things that account for life expectancy than just what you eat. There's also toxins in our air and our water. They're everywhere, you know? The new car smell, for example, that's toxic. That's a neurotoxin. There's toxins everywhere. Although I would of course suggest eat a raw vegan diet for maximum long-term health, of course, it's more than just what you eat that's gonna account for whether you live to be 100. You know what I mean? Back to the study question, I don't tout myself as being someone who is incredibly science-based. You know, I don't need 500 triple-blind studies to convince me of anything really you know i go with instinct my intuition and what does my instinct tell me that eating dead putrefying rotting animal carcasses is not healthy if i'm not going to go out myself and kill these animals with my bare hand and live with that on my conscience of killing an animal then i'm not going to go to a grocery store and support the meat industry you know for killing things that we don't need it just makes sense to me you know so i'm not going to do it eat what God gave us in plant foods that digest easy, that give us so many nutrients as opposed to, you know, slaughtering a poor animal for nutrition. And right now, if you're listening to this and you're saying, well, meat has nutrients, well, sure it does, but that doesn't mean that it's not toxic for you. There's many food products on the market that have nutrients, but that doesn't mean that they're not toxic, acidic, and will just hurt you over time. Meat is toxic to the human organism. It's just that simple. I know that people, a lot of people are in denial about that, but it's, it's the truth. Meat is toxic. I should have probably started out the video by saying this, but I don't judge anyone that eats meat. And you know why? Because first of all, it's none of my business. And B, like I said, and like I keep saying, what you eat doesn't necessarily affect who you are as a person. Now, if you are toxic and just really, really bogged down with processed foods and toxins floating around in your body and an unclean GI tract, yes, that absolutely can affect your personality. It can make you angry, irritated. Um, just, it can make you a, a totally different person than who you would be if you switched your diet. But that being said, you know, why, why would I 
um, take it upon myself to judge anyone by what they eat. You know, it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm trying to live a life of spirituality and I'm trying to live a life where I don't hurt anyone or anything. So why would I be mad at anyone for eating meat? It's such a small, trivial thing to to get up in arms about. You know, I'm not judging anyone or anything and when it comes down to it, if you want to eat meat, go for it because in the end, in my opinion, you're only hurting yourself. That's just what it is. I'm I'm not going to change my truth and your truth might be different than my truth, but my truth is that I'm still going to continue to eat my living vibrant foods all day long. I'm going to keep exercising, I'm going to keep practicing spirituality and praying and meditating, being happy, going outside and loving nature and being so thankful for everything God has given me and I'm still going to be content no matter if everyone around me is eating meat because I'm going to live by my truth always. You have to figure out what your truth is in life and you have to live by it. So I have figured out mine pretty much and of course I'm still evolving. I hope to always be evolving in this life. I just really encourage you that if you are a vegan to not get so frustrated and angry at people who eat meat because it's their life, not yours. You've already figured out the truth. You've already figured out what you want for your life and you're, you're, you've changed yourself but you can't change anyone else. Other people around you, whether it's your significant other, your family members, your friends, they have to change themselves. You cannot change anyone. Sure, you can give them the learning tools and you can hope to enlighten them, but it comes down to them. I just would really encourage people in the raw vegan and vegan movement to spread light and happiness. So if, if I'm the light in this world, you and you're walking around in a sea of people that are asleep and in the dark, you know, you want people to be attracted to your light. And how can you be a light full of happiness if you get angry at every person you come across who eats meat? Because come on, you guys, most people in a society eat meat. I can hope one day that we awake to a planet that is all vegan, but it's probably not gonna happen in my lifetime. So you have to be a light and you have to be able to let people come into that light on their own time. You know, you can be over here saying, come on, come to the light. I will teach you how to be happy and vibrant. Sure, you can do that. That's what I'm trying to do with my videos and just being an example in my everyday life. But people have to want that for themselves. You can never poke it down someone's throat enough to where they're going to change because ultimately they're going to resent you for that. So back to the question of do vegans live longer? So I would say that the key to living longer for anyone is to detoxify. And if you don't dig deep and detoxify your body long term, then you're not necessarily going to live longer if you're eating a vegan diet. If you want to detoxify of course, the best diet on earth to eat is raw vegan because it encourages detoxification, especially a high fruit diet, okay? So that's the key to living longer and getting your body completely cleaned out so it can absorb the nutrients from your food so it can just be revived, you know? Because most people were not born raw vegans where they lived completely clean. So it's so important to detoxify and to remove your mucoid plaque from your GI tract from a lifetime of your body throwing up defense mechanisms to the horrible food that you put down your gullet. Getting your kidneys to filter correctly is so important, you guys. In the morning, first thing, pee in a clear jar or a cup and it should have sediment in it. You know, it should have, it should look like a snow globe. If it doesn't, that means your kidneys are not filtering correctly. And um, why do we want them to filter correctly? Because the kidneys are the only two organs that filter the lymphatic system, which is the series of tubes and lymph nodes all throughout the body, which is like the, the sewer system of the body. So if your kidneys aren't filtering correctly, you're gonna get backed up over time causing so many problems. That's what I had. I had chronic skin problems my whole life and I know that it was based in my lymphatic system and my kidneys. 
So that is a key important thing to understand if you're trying to live longer. Get your kidneys to filter correctly. Also, clean and strengthen your liver. That's the granddaddy organ of detoxification. You have gotta get a clean liver if you want any type of health long term. And if you don't detoxify, you're just, you're not necessarily gonna live longer than meat eaters in my opinion. So that is why fasting, mono fruit fasting, juice feasting, and of course water fasting is the top dog, the top echelon. Those are the true keys to health and living long, okay? So no, if you are a vegan or a vegetarian, you're not necessarily gonna live longer than someone who's stuffing down a steak at night, you know? It's, it's, it's more complicated than that. And that is why the minute I found out about detoxification, I absolutely fell in love with it, you know? I fell in love so much. And I don't think that I will ever go a day without thanking the Lord and my lucky stars for that, you know, because so many people are walking around who know nothing about detoxification. And, you know, especially if they have any type of health problem, the medical doctors are not going to tell you about detoxification, you guys, because there's no money in it. They're going to give you prescription drugs to cover up your symptoms or they're gonna rip your gallbladder out or your thyroid or your tonsils, they're not gonna tell you the true keys to health. That's why if you're watching this right now, you, in my opinion, you have good karma. You are so blessed because somehow someone led you to this. And that just makes my soul and my heart so happy um, to help anyone to learn about detoxification because that is the true key to health. So as far as a study um, to see if vegans live longer, you know, I haven't looked that up because like I said before, I'm just not someone who bases my life on these studies who were done by people in the allopathic world, first of all, you know? So, but there is one that I do know of and it's the China study by T. Colin Campbell. I own the book. It is amazing. So it's a book where they did a massive study in 65 countries in China that showed how not eating animal products reduces your risk of all kinds of disease all across the board, like cancer, heart disease, etc. So it's a great book for someone who's just stepping into the world of veganism. I remember it's one of the first things I read. Um, and the study concluded that countries with a high consumption of animal-based foods in 1983 to 1984 were way more likely to have had higher death rates from Western diseases, while the opposite was true for countries that ate more plant foods. So um, that's a great one to read. And also read The Mucusless Diet Healing System by Arnold Errett or The Detox Miracle Sourcebook by Dr. Robert Morse, or The PH Miracle by Dr. Robert Young. Those are all books that I would really suggest you reading if you were trying to figure out anything about the vegan diet. So now I'm gonna get into the carnosine thing. So I had honestly never heard of that before I got this question, but I did know that it was the type of word that sounded like it was an amino acid. And an amino acid is a building block of protein. So, it looks like that this is going back to a protein question <laughs> and I just want to clear up the air right now that there's actually no medical term for protein deficiency and why is that? It's because it is so hard to be deficient in any kind of protein um, unless you're severely malnourished and you're not eating anything. Then you can be protein deficient just like you'd be deficient in a lot of things. But it is so hard to be protein deficient. And the good news is if you're on a vegan diet and you have people in your ear telling you that you're gonna be protein deficient, which is the last thing you need to worry about, the good thing is that every plant food has amino acids that create protein. So especially things like dark leafy greens, nuts and seeds, um, things like spirulina. I love tahini and hemp seeds and um, you know, I have a huge salad every day, they're loaded with protein and it's plant protein. And do you know why that's good? Because animal protein is acidic and toxic to the body. It makes you sicker over time, but plant protein makes you healthy and strong and vibrant over time. So that's the good thing about that. You know, even fruit has amino acids. So there's no worry about this, you guys. And 
If vegans didn't get enough protein, I would pretty much be dead right now or I would be so malnourished that I would be bent over and I couldn't even walk. <laughs> and it would be the same thing for all of these long-term vegans who are in actuality thriving much more than the general population who stuffs their face with meat all day and dairy. So cardazine, or it's also called beta alanine, is an amino acid that's a protein that a lot of meat eaters peddle in terms of supplements. So it's always funny when bodybuilders or meat eaters say that you won't get enough protein on a vegan diet, but they want you to take protein supplements or like carnosine supplements, you know? Isn't that funny? It's like <laughs> It's just really funny to me. So beta alanine is, is typically a supplement that bodybuilders take. And but if you're eating meat, why is it why is it that the meat eaters are the ones that always take all the supplements for strength? You know, shouldn't you just be able to eat a steak and be strong? It just doesn't make sense. That's because these a lot of meat eaters and the people that lift weights they're doing it for vanity reasons. So they're taking all of this protein to build themselves up. When in actuality, it's high protein diets that wreak havoc on the kidneys and the colon over time. That's why I feel so sorry for people that are just so attached to their high protein diets or who eat so much meat because they're ruining their kidneys and their colons over time. You know, they just are and it's really sad. So I think as a society, we need to get away from this, you know, you need your protein, 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 protein. Uh, mind mindset and move towards you need more vitamins and minerals you know you're gonna get enough protein especially on a plant food diet it's just a given so we really need to focus on getting enough fruits and vegetables as opposed to loading our bodies and our kidneys down with all of this protein so no a carnosine supplement is not necessary and um, plus you want as little synthetic man-made supplements in your body as possible you know you don't want to mess up with the natural chemistry of your body that's why i like whole food supplements so for example if you are a vegan and you're trying to get selenium instead of eating dead animal flesh in terms of a fish who's loaded with mercury and fish is one of the most polluted things you can eat eat one brazil nut a day or a half of a Brazil nut a day, you'll get all the selenium you need. So that's a whole food supplement. That's of course something I would recommend instead of going out and paying for a synthetic, made in a laboratory selenium supplement. You know what I mean? So you just want as little of that in your body as possible. Let me just repeat and summarize that you're gonna get all of the protein and all of the amino acids you need on a vegan or a raw vegan diet. So in my opinion, if you want to live longer than most, what are you going to need to do? You're going to need to detoxify your body for long periods of time. Uh, for me, a minimum of five years is necessary to be truly cleaned out, you know, by things like I talked about before, juice fasting, water fasting, water fruit dieting, you know, going to watermelon island <laughs> where you only eat watermelon for like seven days or something like that. Okay, so after you detoxify, or while you're detoxifying, you're gonna wanna eat a raw vegan diet. And that's because it just makes sense. You're gonna want these living, vibrant, nutritionally rich foods, you know? Especially when we are constantly surrounded by toxicity in our environment, in our air, our water, and now they're dumping chemtrails on us. I encourage you to look up chemtrails because that's a whole nother video in and of itself. So there's toxins everywhere. So we need to be able to take charge of our own health and take it into our own hands. And by doing that, we're gonna need to detoxify and eat a living foods diet and take out the acidic, toxic, unnecessary foods like meat and dairy and grains. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I know that I, I'm sure I got a little bit intense in parts of this, but that's just because that's my passion coming through and that's my desire to help you guys in any way I can. So I hope that that answered the question of my first series of questions from a carnivore. So thank you so much for watching and subscribing and if you watch this whole video, then mwah, I'm so appreciative and I will see you soon you guys. Bye.